for me, Charlie Watson, and I'm in my kitchen. It's like four in the morning. I gotta get ready. I gotta say some things. Well, first to start off, because I'm gonna finish that dream. The dream story is inside of the business plan, is inside of the scriptures that have been searched. So I'm going to pick it up from where I started, but I'm going to preface this video saying that my last video, when I did the card reading, I did not read correctly. I did it narcissistically, narcissistically. I talked about my purple glasses and I talked about I uh, worked at a bar. See, other people have had similar and uh, experiences where they had to do things that they didn't want or that um, they received unconventional methods of healing. So thank you for indulging me as I pick up the story. So I am now fluid enough to speak and say, okay, I never saw the movie. I never saw the movie, The Passion of Christ, but I heard about it. And during the time when I heard about it, <coughs> excuse me, there, um, so basically I was working and I was very sleepy. I came home from work one day, the TV was on, and I just saw a clip of the movie. And the clip I saw, I think, was a, a figure that was like Obama, and then he's running around in the crowd and telling the crowd something. And I, I do remember going to sleep on that. Okay, so this is back in the 90s. This is when this dream happened. Mm, okay, okay, then it's not in the 90s because whatever the Passion of Christ came out. So, in this dream, I remember being in a crowd and seeing this figure moving to, through the crowd and whispering in people and getting them, uh, getting them riled up. And I remember me falling backwards in the crowd. I was getting further and further away from Jesus, the rock of Jesus, but I was in the crowd, so I was still in the mix. So anyway, in this dream in the 90s, and I'm speaking as S. Marie, so I come across the little man in the tree, and it's Nicodemus or Zachariah or the both, and I'm talking to them both. And we're having a, um, a minutia discussion. I don't think it's about anything. But here's where I can pick it up. Now, where I pick it up is this year when I sat on video. I thank God for the World Wide Web and the spiritual anointing. So he, during the video, I, I kind of make a joke off. Uh, I joke off the dream. Yeah, he saw Judas and like, F you Judas. That was a joke. Because the spirit comes and says, let me tell you what really happened. Let me tell you how Judas really died. Judas was mad. Judas was pissed. Judas threw that money down. He was mad when he died. He was mad. Jesus effed it up. He had everything. And, and I will give you the scripture to even show you where the spirit showed me. So when Judas died and he went to hell, it was a party in hell. And, and he was, and he got, he, it was a pity party. And J Judas is like, yeah, we, we was this close. We had that going. And, and everyone was in the, uh, the, the angels down there were like agreeing with Judas. Like, yeah, you was doing good. You was stunting. You was touching all that stuff. Got to fight these flies like a weapon. So while he was, he was down there and everything. He was in a very good spot. He, he was like the star of the show. And uh, then when Jesus showed up, that's when, and then I told you that all these conversations started going on. Not only was there conversations, I started seeing feet. I saw my feet. I saw different feet, but I'm not going to go there. In fact, this story can take off and go creative to anyone who wants to pick it up. Um, so now, okay.
Okay, so let me come back into scripture. Okay, now remember when I said we're going to get godly money and we're going to do it by coding to godly money in the Bible. We're all coders now, so we know that that's possible. So start with the John 3.16, which the Spirit said, it is free. I got that part right, but it can be stolen. Oh, and that's the two things I got to tell you. And I was looking for a band to correct me, and I didn't see anything. I didn't see men at all even coming close to uh, acknowledging crowds and crumble. Let me tell you what that is. I have said, and I didn't say it. Okay, Sharon Marie said by the Spirit telling me to say it, because Sharon Marie would never say God had a force field that could only go but so far, and Judas swelled up the crowd where God couldn't get through this crowd. Okay, let me explain that. God can do anything. But what happened was Judas had stolen, had his 316, his gift stolen. And because it was stolen, it turned him dark. So everyone in his crowd was dark. And that's why his crowd stayed to the back and there was a racket. Now watch this because here's where the spirit going. going, going. I'm going to turn the video off of this because then I'm going to come back and let y'all uh, marinate. But the important thing is, I have to get out a message before July 1st. July 1st, the equivalent of that Titanic, unintentional thing that happened, that's about to happen again. Okay. All right, so stay with me now. The 10 men in the crowd that were not, I, I believe this is the, I, I believe this is Luke chapter 10, but don't, but just Google it. The 10 men that came for healing, um, they, they didn't come all the way in to Jesus. They, they weren't going to, they, they, they stayed back. You, you know what I'm saying? They, they're scared to approach the true throne and they, they're afraid of, uh, all the social constructs around them, what people will say, how they, you know, what might be perceived. So they, they just yelled out from the crowd, hey, Jesus, can you heal us? Jesus, we need you over here. Can we get your attention? It's 10, 10 men, M-E-N, men, asking Jesus for a healing. And Jesus says, throw him one, throw him one. There you go. You're healed. You're healed. So then the Bible tells you, the Bible tells you that the 10 men are, are healed and Jesus says, watch this, watch this. Go in and tell the Pharisees, go show yourself to the Pharisees and tell them that you got your healing. Jesus was telling them to basically go to the back because that's where they at. They in the back with Judas and the racket. And let me, because they always keep coming up here to say something to me every time they get something in their head to say to me. So now I'm sending them something to say to me. So let them say something to me now. Well, the Divine Nine went on down to the back, to the racket. They there with Judas. They there with the Pharisees. And they there with the people who are willing to accept this counterfeit gospel. This counterfeit gospel, which is basically which is basically gossip. It's, um, it's Judas trying to mimic and counterfeit Jesus in the back of the church. Jude, if you've seen The Godfather, any gangster movie, you understand what kind of games Judas would play. Oh, but here's what's really cool. You know who one of the biggest heroes in the Bible are? I said, do you know who one of the most biggest heroes in the Bible are? Everybody trying to make this book. But who comes around with nothing and just make, be making all the books? The little widow with nothing. She just comes. Them little widows. This is why I say if you're creative, you can get into this story. Them little widows was in the back trying to press forward to Jesus. And Judas was like, you know, uh, we, we, no. And, and, you know, 
insulting them and everything. The little widows had them face, their face like this, like Judas, I will you up. If you don't get out my way, I mean, they wasn't playing. Cause, so when I say Judas is a pimp and everybody loved him, he was lovable, but at the same time, kind of, you could mess him up. Because, you know, because he... He held secrets. He, he did a lot of stuff. He was the godfather, and you could definitely, if you wasn't focused on Jesus and you focused on Judas, you might think to either join him or beat him up. But anyway, back to my story. Um, so I was saying that Jesus told these nine men, he told the ten men, to go on and uh, show themselves to the Pharisees. So they did. But one man out of the ten, one man came back and said, Jesus, I got, I got to find you. I got to say thank you. I can't just not say thank you. I can't leave you. And he, I think he wanted to stay with Jesus. But Jesus said, no, I want you to just, if you got this kind of faith, you know, stay here and, and do this thing for me. I, I guess Jesus said, no new friends. Because, you know, Judas is back there acting up. And, you know. But anyway, the point is... That Jesus is saying there was a racket in the back. Them, them nine men knew where to find the Pharisees and go show themselves. What they did was they just made a racket out of themselves. And come July 1st, this racket, which has been a stench in the nostrils of Almighty God, who does not want our sacrifice, he wants our obedience. Um... So I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for your time. 10,000 citizens invest $50 on our public market date. We purchased 10 acres of land. I'm sorry. We purchased six acres of land in 10 different inner city locations with 1,000 citizen shareholders each location. We do this to form a more perfect union to change the narrative that has been set forth as a lie against the children of Melanated and living in inner city USA. This is not a race or a color thing. This is humans needing to survive. And we're not going to do it around these sellouts and acting weak. And that's exactly what they want from us, to be weak-minded and weak bodies. We got to stop listening. Oh, and all these people with your letters, and you keep coming on every day. Where I'm from, Charles Dutton wrote The Corner. That's before the demons took over and made it The Wire and made it super gay and stupid. The Corner is what's real. And on The Corner, if you're honest, you bring your scale. On The Corner, if you're honest, you bring your scale. Don't call yourself a coach if you can't step on a scale. And that's how you are accountable. How are you going to count if you don't weigh?